happy Easter. It's Pastor Alicia here, and I am so pumped for what's about to happen. Before we get started, there's only one thing you need to know. Easter Jam is for everybody in your family. If you're a teenager, this is for you. You too, college students. And if you're a younger kid, get ready. We're about ready to have some serious fun, and we need you to lead the way. Adults, buckle up. This is Easter like you've never done it before. No matter who you are, we want you to know that Easter Jam is for you too. The only way to not have fun is to not participate. So look around. Is there anybody missing? If so, hit that pause button and go get them right now. We're going to get started in three, two, one. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Okay, hear me out. There are only two kinds of people in the world. People who love these things and people who do not like me. I just don't get it how you can eat something this cute and dreamy. Let's see how your family feels. Show me a thumbs up if you love to eat peeps and a thumbs down if you don't. Okay, okay. There are a lot of different opinions out there. No matter how you feel about eating peeps, you're going to love this game. Your family is going to face off in the greatest peeps jousting competition of all times. I'm going to explain how it works and then I'll tell you when to get started. First, divide the room into two teams. Next, take your two peeps, a yellow peep and a pink peep, and assign them to each team. The A team gets the yellow peep and the B team gets the pink peep. You can come up with funny names if you want, like Lord Sugarcoat or Sir Sprinkles. You get the idea. You can also use a marker to decorate them, like give them angry eyebrows or a mustache. Whatever you'd like to do, just get creative and let those juices flow. Next, you're going to prepare your peeps for battle. Stick a toothpick in each peep to prepare them for battle. Think of the toothpick as a joust, a lightsaber, or a sword. It just depends on how serious your family is about competition. Make sure the toothpicks are facing each other and place the two peeps on a microwave safe place. No social distancing necessary. You want the peeps close together and facing one another. Finally, for the big event, gather around and put them on the plate or in the microwave and set the timer for 45 seconds. You won't let it run that long. In fact, don't let it run that long. Then press start and watch from a safe, safe distance as the lightsabers, uh, the toothpick lightsabers touch one another. And the first toothpick to fall on the other one wins. As soon as this happens, you're going to want to stop the microwave. Trust me on this one, you're going to want to stop the microwave. Okay, time to get this thing going. Don't forget to snap a pic and send it to me and put it in the group app so everyone can see what you're doing. All right, how did it go? Honestly, I did not think it would be that fun. I thought they were gonna explode before the lightsaber fell. <laughs> Look at mine, <laughs> melted. My yellow one won, which one won for you? Thumbs up for yellow, thumbs down for pink. <laughs> and for another game, this one you'll need a laundry basket and socks, lots of socks. Clean or dirty, doesn't matter, no judgment, they just have to have a match. If you need to go and grab those now, press pause and then um, I'll explain the rest. Got your laundry basket and socks? Great, now choose people to play. You'll need two people to be scorekeepers and two people to play. 
To get started, dump all the socks on one side of the room. Don't worry, those socks will make their way back to the baskets real soon. Then place the baskets on the other side of the room. When I say go, the players will grab a sock to go through the pile and find the match. Roll the socks together in the shape of a ball or an Easter egg and then toss them into the laundry basket. The player with the most socks in the basket at the end of the game wins. If you don't have scorekeepers, you'll have to just keep score yourself. Honor system. Adults, we're watching you. <laughs> All right, okay, if needed, you can press pause now and go get everything and everyone in position and I will wait here. Everybody ready? Great! We're putting one minute timer on the clock. This Easter egg throwdown is happening in three, two, one, go! on the screen to wish your peeps a happy Easter. Okay, so I just got like nine texts from everyone that is here. Thanks family. Nice. Even though we're celebrating this Easter a little bit differently than we do before, that's okay. Easter is still happy. And that's not just because of our peeps or our Easter baskets or chocolate bunnies, although those things are awesome. It's so happy because of what happened a thousand years ago at the first Easter. It's the world's most powerful story, and yet it's so simple. So simple that it can be told with laundry. In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in his very own image. But then, we turned away from God. Sin entered the world, like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts, and minds, and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God, love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him he was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, 
he told them that he would be leaving, but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him. But a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, It is finished. Then he died. The earth shook. Rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, Surely he was the Son of God. One of Jesus' followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus' friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them, but now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus' friends stayed hidden in fear for three days. But early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, God's Son, became like us to lay down his life. Through God's power, he defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, he's promised to return so we can live with him forever. Wow, I hear the story every Easter and it always amazes me. I mean, God sent Jesus to this world to remind us that he is greater than anything that can go wrong in my world. The simple fact is, Jesus came back to life is proof to me that I can face anything bad that happens. I like to think about it this way. I can because Jesus is alive. I can keep loving because Jesus is alive. I can be brave because Jesus is alive. I can have hope because Jesus is alive. Here's an idea. Take a few minutes with your family and add to the list of things that you can do because Jesus is alive. Ask questions as, as a family and fill in the blank. I can because Jesus is alive. Pause the video while you discuss, and when you finish, meet me back here. Awesome. I love conversations like these because, it, because I remember what God has done in the past, and it helps me to trust him with what's going on in my life right now. I hope that's true for you too. And I hope that you spend the rest of the day making happy memories with your family. To get started, here's one last challenge. For this one, you're going to need to decide who's the technology genius at your house. Maybe it's a parent or an aunt or a grandparent or more than likely the eighth grader. Either way, decide who the person is now. Got it? Awesome. As soon as the video is over, I want you to go outside and take a family Easter photo. You can be dressed up in your Easter PJs or in your fancy dresses. It can be totally normal showing your faces or silly with one of those silly faces that turned you into the bunny rabbit. 
No matter how you do it, just take a family photo and make it awesome. Then share it to social media and onto our Groovy app so everyone can see how we can have Easter together separately. Maybe now more than ever, it's time to celebrate God's faithfulness and the hope of Jesus. After all, that's what makes Easter so happy. Love you all and miss you and can't wait till we can be together again soon. Perfect 